super happy to present this new series to you. So basically, this series is about thinking beyond the ordinary careers. So most of us, while we grow up in India, we grow up believing that the only good careers that exist in the world are either medical or engineering or chartered accountancy, right? But there are so many people out there who are doing amazing things with their careers and they have great side hustles. And we don't know anything about those careers at all. So through this series, I wanted to introduce some really cool people who are doing like really offbeat careers and are doing a really great job in that offbeat career. And that is the core goal of this uh, series. And I hope to do it every week, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Today is the first episode and I'm really, really excited uh, for this show. So as our first guest, we have someone who's a really, really, who is in a really interesting career. So our first guest is Hardik Doshi. He works as a management consultant at EY and is also a freelance voiceover artist for audiobooks. Now, isn't that really crazy, a freelance voiceover artist for audiobooks? And I'm really excited to introduce you people to Hardik. So without further ado, let's welcome Hardik to the show. Hello, Hardik. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy and I'm really excited for my audience to know more about you and learn more from you. So could you give us a small introduction about who you are and what you do? So hi, I'm Hardik Doshi. I'm 25. I graduated in 2020 with an engineering and degree in computer science and an MBA in technology management. I had gotten a pre-placement offer to join Ernst & Young. And that's that's where my journey began with this company. I've progressed from tech consulting to management, but I always had used to have a lot of people come to me and tell me that you should do something with your voice, you should do voiceovers, etc. So that's where I think the journey began because there was a gap in in terms of hiring. There was a hiring freeze, so I was off like technically, even though I had a job, I it didn't start for the next seven months after I had graduated. So that's when I sort of introspected about how I can get, you know, ways to monetize and what I can do, what other things, side hustles, as they call it. And that's where voiceovers started for me. Well, that is like really, really interesting. And I'm so excited to, you know, actually meet someone who has done something in audiobook. Like uh, the, from the moment I started listening to audiobooks, I was always curious about this career of an audiobook narrator. Like, what they do, how they do it, what's the whole process like. And I'm going to pick your brains throughout the session. And I want to uh, say a message to everyone who's watching this right now. Feel free to drop any questions that you have for Hardik regarding this uh, interesting career in the comments. I'm sure he'll be happy to answer them as well. All right. So Hardik, my first question for you is, uh, tell us about your job. Like, uh, I know you narrate audiobooks, but what exactly do you do? What's the whole process like? Tell us everything right from the beginning. Sure. So, so uh, I think it's more like a freelance gig, as in when you do get an opportunity. It's nothing that is constant. And um, I just want to do a quick check. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I hope the people who are listening can okay, hear you as well. So, uh, okay, great. So there's that. It's it's in the work. It's a gig based thing. It's not perfect individual, um, you know, consistent work. What what work? What happens is basically that you get a lot of these requests. There are auditions that you have to do. You have to send samples, and based on that, based on your profile, it's about building a profile initially. And as and when you do get involved in these auditions, it can often be multiple rounds of auditions, where they will request you to do certain takes in different ways until the production team is happy. And it is after that that they will be able to share. Uh, you know, any more details about pricing, the hours that you would have to give, etc. So yes, it's more of gig based work. It also makes a huge difference in terms of who your network is, who's allow, who you know, and how they can source work for you. 
all right that is uh very interesting so how does the you know like once you get selected for a gig so how does the process work like do you go to a studio or do you record from your home do you have to get equipment what is the whole process like so this is actually very interesting because um, normal case you would have to go to a studio you hire a studio that is where there is a sound engineer that comes with the studio and the sound engineers are very very crucial part to your work going out correctly now uh, in terms of uh, so so this is actually step 2 this is after you've gotten the audition cleared the audition they like you and there can be two ways in which this can be structured financially i'll stick to the financials later because i think you want to go to that later so right now once you hire a studio it may be hired by you or by the agent so uh, it is part time work uh, I, i think sassi rekha has asked a question and it is part time work for sure so once you've gotten into a studio the sound engineer will do a sound test with you they will make you read some parts of the script understand your sound understand what the producer wants and ensure that they can get the right kind of sound output which everyone is happy with then starts the actual process of recording for an audio book audio book typically it's you and the sound engineer for long hours say 5 6 8 hours a day maybe longer it's up to you but uh, that's when you're reading through uh, the the entire book you do it chapter wise so it's easier to edit and at the end of all of that they are able to remove background noise white noise any pauses any mistakes there's a certain layer of uh you know fine tuning which the sound engineer does so that's actually a very very important part of it as well wow that is so cool like, i didn't know about any of these things before it's very interesting hearing them from but, you but if i can quickly add there, one way that, yeah sorry sorry if i can quickly add there one one thing that that in, in the lockdown was still advertising people were still you know creating new commercial in the lockdowns but with almost no access to studios so that is where i tend to get a few uh, opportunities as well because those same agents out to you and they are they are, they want you to record some but they don't have access to a studio so what i was lucky to do was that my mentor had also shared some tips with me out this and uh, was recreate some sort of a sound studio set up in my house so when, when at that point the criteria for getting work was not if you're a great voice over artist or not but it was whether you can record in good circumstances or not so in the lockdown i've done multiple voice overs where they've actually asked for samples and i've done one without the setup and with the setup and they can try and kind of differentiate with the setup they tend to think that oh you've recorded this in a studio so they're actually even able to pay you a little better in those cases so quickly for the sake of the audience i think i'll i'll run them through what this process is thing what i used to do was that it's important that sound doesn't bounce a closed room so your recording when you log see go go to a quiet room in the neighbor's house so what i would close it wardrobe so one on each side and two in front of me on top of each other so now i have what pillows do is they ensure that there's no echo the sound doesn't bounce walls of wardrobe and and create an echo effect so that's what the pillow phone actually iphone so that's actually better the iphones have a better cam- uh, recording system and a microphone than actually most professional cameras do so i didn't use the microphone that i had but i used an iphone 11 and on top of that cloth covering the microphone as a diffuser and what it does is ensures that the the sound recorded is much smoother sounding so this is the setup that i would use and then there is tricks about how you're supposed to stand so you may have seen singers and artists who are recording in recording studios you never really directly speak into the mic you have to have it at at a 90 degree angle to the side of your face and you speak this way and then you let it record to the side uh, 
so these are small tips and tricks that my mentor had showed me and because of her uh, you know i ended up getting some more opportunities i was able to record this way and then i i realized the value of a sound engineer so i became my own sound engineer and what i did was i ensured that i learned how to use an editing software so uh, even after i do all this pillow business to record there was still some amount of white noise that gets recorded and that that's the sound of nothing that you hear at the end you know when you just put on earphones and you can hear a sound static static sound so that is the sound that we need to eliminate to get a very clear audio so that is there is a software called audacity a u d a c i t y and there is a free version of that available which allows you to very quickly analyze your sound you can modify pitch tone i was not very you know technically knowledgeable in that aspect all i knew how to do was i could figure out that i need to get rid of the white noise and that's what i would do so that software helped me further and after hearing that they actually the first person i sent it to at the agency actually got back to me saying hey where did you find a recording studio like clarity in the middle of the lockdowns so of course i may not have conveyed to them that i recorded it in, in my closet at home but uh, that's where this came up from and then there's been a steady flow of different gigs that is like really amazing a seriously hat soft to your dedication like setting up pillows putting a cloth over mic using audacity to edit the sound that's like really amazing so much dedication literally hat soft to you so uh hardik we have a question from amrinal so first of all mrinal is saying rooting for you thank you mrinal thank you so much so she has a question for hardik Uh, as a voice over artist which genre do you like the most and is there a dream book that you would love to give your voice over to so as a voice over artist i think the genre that my voice is more suited to is uh, a lot of corporate books a lot of books about self help and improvement that is what i've been told i i am i still think i am a complete newbie to the industry and uh, i'm only getting started but from a personal point of view in terms of listening to them i'll enjoy kinds of murder mystery and fiction books as well and i hope to at some point do say an interesting version of the famous fives because they were very very close to me my heart while growing up i've read a lot of enid blyton books and now i hope some day i can do like an indianized version of it that is so crazy so my question is like i think everyone wants to know this as well where can we find the books that you have narrated can you give us like a few links i sure can there is an audible book i have only mm-hmm. narrated one audio book thus far like i mentioned because i'm only getting started it's on audible and there are there is another one which is still in the works but i haven't recorded it yet and uh, yes there are some uh, corporate avs corporate web company websites and things like that those are you know in used for internal purposes so in terms of what i have access to there are limited ones but i'd be happy to share a link with you at the end of this i've actually yeah, shared yeah, it with you anangsha yes on, on whatsapp if that okay. helps and yeah yeah for uh, sure i'll yep. share, i'll leave it as a comment on this video and people who are watching they can sure. go ahead and get your book on audible because i'm pretty sure everyone would be super curious to hear something that you have narrated after watching this really amazing video all right uh, so, so i actually shared it with you question. on whatsapp if you yeah. can somehow share it with you yeah yeah i can i can see it i'm going to share this in the chat on linkedin so that people who are watching they can uh, have a look all right amazing i've shared yeah. it on the Now chat so there's a small <laughs> there's a small uh, you know unfortunate circumstance yeah. behind this also um unfortunately because of how the industry works you know smaller people newer people may not always get the kind of recognition that they deserve so although the first person you'll hear when you hit the sample tab and listen to the word, sample of the audiobook on audible is me but there's no mention of me on the uh, list of narrators on audible so it's actually and i've still not even been paid for this book actually so okay. it it, it works in different ways that it's not as hunky dory as it seems it's not as easy as it seems it's taken about 2 years and i've done one audiobook for paid you know peanuts so 
that that's the interesting thing that you have to go through uh, to eventually get the right kind of connects and it's something that uh, i'd like to put out as a disclaimer to you know a lot of people who may be listening to this aspiring voice over artists that it's not all as smooth and flashy as it seems i know our clickbait sounded very very interesting to <laughs> to uh, you know get onto this live but it doesn't always work like that yeah i mean i think that's expected because like you mentioned you're just getting started and in every career there are the, the hurdles are the hardest at the beginning right and once you also become more experienced i think these all will smoothen out a little and it will become easier so more than more than an experience point of view i think it's a little to do with the fact that it doesn't always work things don't always work the way they should now i am very very fortunate that i have very good mentors i think two of them are one of them being miss monaz ranina she is probably one of india's best voice over artists at the moment and in fact she has been for the last say 20 maybe 30 years and she is magic it's absolute magic speaking to her she can talk in five different completely different sounds in once and you won't be able to picture that that is the sound coming out of one you know feeble lady in her 50s and that's the exciting part of it that's not a genre that i'm great at i'm more i i tend to stick with my natural voice more than anything but she has been a great mentor in terms of teaching me a the tips and tricks of the trade there was a longer pro, she she conducted a workshop for me a training for me etc because of which i was able to become slightly better and get some kind of work and also second is mr raj barua who runs a company called voice smiths it's his company through which i got this uh, activity and it's he's also great help in terms of sourcing new work for me all right that's uh, that's uh, actually very heartening to hear uh, we also have a comment by shreya so shreya says that you know as a filmmaking graduate she can relate to all the hacks that you use for clear recording and she can recommend a brilliant professional software for sound ed- editing isotope rx9 i hope like you know whoever is listening it's helpful to them as well have you like any experience using this hardy i don't have experience using this particular microphone but yes i have heard of it and it's definitely very handy for people who may even want to start recording at home all right so whoever is you know watching this you can definitely take note of the software uh, or also an care. iphone any yes. iphone fantastic microphones you know actually when i was thinking of getting a camera for my uh, videos many of my friends suggested that don't get a camera get an iphone it's going to be like much more uh, handy than a camera no definitely for a for any kind of content creator mm-hmm. to have an iphone is an asset it's an investment not just a device you have for fun <laughs> right definitely so we have another question by sasi rekha it says that uh, what excites you for voice overs that's a very okay. deep question i think it's a very deep question and i have a deep and a shallow answer to it the shallow answer is money <laughs> that uh, that is how i would say uh, like, yeah. okay if talking can get me more money i'm happy to do it either way but the deeper answer to it is i'm fascinated with the concept that something i may have done today or recorded today is just going to float around in the universe in history on audible or on cuckoo fm or any such platform where people for years to come are able to listen to something that i helped create and that's that's something that i particularly find interesting about films about any kind of content online and primarily things that are bringing to life you know great works of literature in terms of audio books that is so true and it's like you know it's like one some a piece of art that's going to be there in the universe forever and a book an audio book has so much longer life than any other content that you put on social media right so it's like it's going to be there forever something that you created that's really amazing yes all right so uh my next question to you hardik is i know you have talked a little bit about it already but can you just streamline the process a bit So you know how did you learn about uh, this field as a possible side hustle and what were some qualifications you had to pos- uh, possess and how was the whole recruitment process like 
Sure. So um, I'll explain it. It's difficult to get in right away without having some kind of background, uh, you know, support. How I got started was I had seen an advertisement for, like I mentioned, my mentor, Miss Monaz Ranina, her workshops that she conducts, that she was conducting a voiceover training workshop. But it was not particularly for audiobooks, just general voiceovers in general. And she's also a coach for the Miss Universe, Miss India contestants every year. And uh, so she primarily conducted this 15 day workshop, which was supposed to be online, uh, sorry, which was supposed to be in different studios where she gives us the effect and the flavor of actually being in a recording studio with a sound engineer and seeing what that feels like, what technicalities we can work on, et cetera, and training us. So that's how I got started. She conducts a fantastic workshop long term. I'd be happy to share her contact details for somebody who may be interested. You should definitely but share that. Many people uh, she's be interested. Interested in India and she's happy to, you know, get more business also. But that is how I started. I would say those were my only qualifications. One very important part is that we must have uh, some amount of training in basic English, in your diction, it may be Hindi, it can be a regional language. One very important fact is that regional content is blowing up in India right now. There is an app called Kuku FM, which is fantastic. Again, they, are, they have about, I, I don't remember the latest figures, but if I'm not wrong, they recently raised about $19.5 million in funding and they have about oh, wow. 10 million active users. So across active users for a new company, primarily focusing on regional language, uh, audio books. And they, so, so like this, they are going to see a lot more demand, a lot more demand for audio book narrators, voiceover artists in, in different regional. So in terms of an industry to enter, there is great growth potential for anyone who's willing, willing to, or, or rather looking forward to be a voiceover artist. That is crazy. I have actually shared the link of uh, Monaz Ranina in the chat. So, you know, if anybody is interested, they can connect with her on LinkedIn. And I think, Hardik, you can share some other links, uh, other social links after this talk as well. And we can share it with anyone who is interested. <laughs> All right. So Sorry. now we're coming to the, you know, the question that everyone wants to know the answer to. Uh, what exactly is the earning potential of this gig? of being a voiceover artist for audiobooks and you know like the maximum minimum the average please share us share some details with us definitely so i'll split it up uh, we'll keep voiceover separate and it is an entirely need based uh, or situation. it depends on how big a brand you're working for how long your part is it's not always about how long your part is it in certain cases you know, I knew of somebody who just said the brand's name in a fantastic way, which is now patented or sorry, trademarked, copyrighted. And, yeah. and it's just that one word has got them lakhs of rupees. But again, that requires years of different training and, and a lot of content experience after which you get something like that. So now that's completely subjective. So I don't have a figure that I can give for a voiceover. What tends to happen is you get paid on an hourly basis in terms of your recordings and how long you take for it. So for example, a 250 page book would take you approximately say, 10 hours to record. And uh, for somebody of my experience of say one year would could, could charge somewhere who, especially because you're trained by someone like Mona's ma'am. Uh, this is again, something that matters because who trains you can sometimes be a way, good way for you to command more money. You may have seen in music also in the music industry where if you've been trained by a particular classical art musician or a, or a pandit or, or a guru. So then those artists tend to that that tends to be their credibility. So same here. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that Mona Ma'am's uh, name also tends to give me some amount of power in terms of bargaining. And uh, so someone with my experience can charge about 5000 rupees per hour in terms of recording fee, but this would include the fee I would have to pay to the recording studio in case I'm working as a complete freelancer. 
now that brings in people like my other mentor mr raj barua who his his company is basically facilitates this change the sound engineer arranged for you and then based on that they are able to uh, you only have to go give your voice over and come back so for example for about then your rate would be about say 3000 rupees an hour 2500 an hour now an experienced you know senior voice over artist charges anywhere between 6 to 10000 rupees per hour but uh, the fact is uh, uh, that these rates are also at about 5 to 6000 rupees even for senior people very often uh, for longer books so that is how it varies but again like i mentioned it's more of a circumstantial pricing but this is the gist of it but it's actually a very good price because 5000 per hour i don't think even software people earn that much in india so it's definitely great but i can understand the investment would be high going in but I think after a few years in this uh, career, this might, you know, things might even out and it will be like highly profitable, right? I agree. Uh, I think it's profitable from day one. Uh, that's mm -hmm. for sure. It's just that there isn't a lot of job security. This is a great side hustle to have, but yeah. you can't be sure to run your house on just this unless you're someone as experienced and talented as, say, Ms. Monaz Ranina. I think that's true for any freelancer or, you know, any person who's in a creative field, like, but yeah, that's okay. That's uh, the uncertainty is what makes things more exciting, especially that's true for me as well. Like if you don't get gigs, you are challenged to find out some other ways, other cool ways of, you know, earning money and that, that process is constantly going on. All right. So Hardik, my next question for you is, uh, if you had to start all, all over again, right, if you had to start from day one uh what would you do differently or what are some extra things that you would do to be in this career to be a voiceover artist for audiobooks so i think i would definitely continue my training process and all the effort that i've put in in the same way there are a lot of things that i've done in terms of you know daily exercises we used to say a lot of tongue twisters on a da daily basis etc uh, a lot of training activities that munaz ma'am would conduct but what I would do differently is I would put my foot down more strongly whenever I had any professional work to ensure that I get the relevant. Because when you don't do that, um, unfortunately, you don't always get the credit that you would deserve. Right. Yeah, that, that that's very important, especially in that audiobook that you mentioned, right? Your voice is the first that plays in the sample, but your name is not there. So I hope you get credit for that soon as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's happening because it's already published on Audible. But uh, let's see for the future. It's a learning right. activity. Yes, of course. Everything is either you win or you learn, right? That's the whole thing. You uh, earn or so you learn. Have, yes. So we have a question by Sassi Rekha again. Uh, thank you for this question. So it's also similar to what I was about to ask you next. So how did you get your first opportunity? Yes. So I, my first opportunity was what I mentioned, you know, where I set up the pillows and sent a sample. Uh, it was for Dabur Almond Hair Oil. And that that paid me 1500 rupees for doing a sample from home. It was a short about 13 second commercial, which I had to record. But I remember that it took me about six hours of proper recording to and fro you know sending the sample getting their feedback editing it on audib on audacity and then resharing the uh, work with them wow like i didn't know even like come dabar aman uh, stuff like that also they need audio samples that's like very interesting and very cool it's eye opening actually okay so uh now like we have had like a very interesting conversation and i have learned a lot uh, from you about this field and I'm pretty sure our audience has learned a, a lot of stuff from you as well so we are going to wrap this interview up in a few minutes so people who are watching if you have any questions please drop them in the comments uh, before we wrap up and until then Hardik my next question is uh, for any person who is willing to start a career in this field to become an audiobook narrator what any, do you have any tips for them or do you have any, you know, useful resources for them or any useful links that can come in handy for them? Anything that you would like to share? 
Sure. So I'm not particularly sure about links or resources, but one thing that we can do is list down items that worked for me. So first, uh, we've already shared with you the contact of Ms. Monaz Ranina in case you're willing to take up, sign up for classes. That's one aspect. Second would be that you can train yourself. If you think you have the gift of the gab, you can speak but in whatever language it may be. You can create content, record voiceovers for maybe your friends, your friends' companies, your own, create things on Instagram, YouTube, uh, do voiceovers of your favorite book. It's as simple as that. At the end of the day, when someone reaches out to you to do a voiceover, what they are going to look for is, do you have experience? So at that point, it does not particularly work to say I'm a fresher, but instead you don't need to have been employed by someone or paid by someone in the past. What you can do is show them the work that you've done for yourself. You could record a voiceover of your favorite book, put it up on YouTube and let it be. Then when someone gets in touch with you regarding how can I, or, or regarding doing a voiceovers for something, you can also show this to them as a part of your portfolio. So that portfolio building activity is very, very important. And uh, then there are, there are a host of uh, you know resources online that are available. I'd be happy to look up something relevant and share that with you. What we can, what I can show, share with you also is that uh, you know there is there's a step by step method of creating your own recording studio at home. I have a document uh, around that. That's something I can share with the audience as well. Yeah, definitely. I think you should definitely share that. I'm sure the people who are listening would love to, you know, have them as well. Because I didn't know anything like this existed before I talked with you. And I hope like it was as eye opening for the audience as it was for me. So thank you so much, Hardik, for being so honest and being so open and for agreeing to do this. I really had a great time talking to you and I'm pretty sure our audience also enjoyed it as well. Uh, it was really an incredible learning opportunity. And for anyone who is uh, looking forward to connect to Hardik, uh, his LinkedIn is linked right here in this uh, in the in the description of this video. So you can find his LinkedIn there. And uh, yeah, that's all I guess. Do you have any parting messages for us, Har Hardik? No, it's this that there's definitely great potential for voiceover artists in India to grow. And it's a great side hustle to have in case you have any questions, queries, or opportunities for me to record uh, voiceovers, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Awesome. Amazing. So thank you so much, Hardik, for agreeing to do this. And thank you so much, everyone who's watching right now. You've been an incredible audience. We loved all your questions. And stay tuned for more because I'll be back next week with another cool guest and another cool career opportunity. So that's all, people. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye, Hardik. Bye.